Howdy folks, Steampunk Desperado here. Today's show is another brief review. This time it's a book I recently finished, The Brass Queen by Elizabeth Chatsworth. A viewer recommended this a few weeks ago and I had an available Audible credit, so I thought, why not? The description says it's a gas lamp fantasy, but we all know that's the same thing as steampunk. It's about a young female arms merchant in Victorian England. My first impression was that this was one of those dystopian grim stories that was so popular in the 1980s and 90s for steampunk. Whereas I prefer the more positive and whimsical variety. Well, I was wrong. I soon realized it was a satire set in an alternate Britain that exists within the multiverse. Now, don't fear the author does not abuse that concept. Alternate dimensions play only a small part in the story. As I read further, I realized that this is a very, very funny book. The main character is Constance Haltwhistle, the daughter of the notorious Baron Haltwhistle, a dealer in exotic armaments. As the Brass Queen, she runs her father's company skillfully, oblivious to the disapproval of her fellow gentry. A woman shouldn't be running a company, especially not an arms company, oh my God. The problem is her father has gone missing. He's been gone for several years. He's about to be declared legally dead. And even though she's his only child, Britain's sexist inheritance laws are going to deprive her of her property and livelihood because her scheming uncle is suing to be declared the heir because, well, she's too young, she's only 21, and she's a woman, and she's unmarried. So the only way she can keep her property is to marry within the next few days. Unfortunately, she has no beau. She is very socially awkward. She's been sheltered by her doting, eccentric father. And although she's both brilliant and beautiful, her prospects aren't that good. Because, first of all, men don't care about her mind. And her flame red hair, now that's a problem too, because... These rich guys, these aristocrats, they don't want ginger children. Nonetheless, she's undaunted. She throws a ball at her estate, inviting all the local gentry and especially the eligible bachelors. And she's going to announce, okay, all men who would like to marry me, please step up. <laughs> On top of it all, of all these problems, somebody has been trying to kill her for the last few months. She has no idea who and why. She suspects it's a disgruntled client. Nonetheless, she's taken to wearing a chainmail corset so she can't be stabbed to death. And sounds very uncomfortable, but also kind of sexy. The ball starts out as a disaster and goes on from there. As she notices an uninvited guest, she thinks, oh no, somebody is trying to kill me. So she's going to have the guy ejected when it so happens that another assassination attempt it occurs right at that time, and he foils it. His quick thinking saves her life. He is J.F. Truesdale, an American spy posing as an engineer who was recently hired by her arms company, and he's attending the ball with her other top scientists. Now, in all that kerfuffle, the top scientists disappear, and they're presumed kidnapped. But where? Who? They don't know. And Constance knows she needs some help. And so she essentially blackmails Truesdale to stay around and help her out, even though he's been planning to go back to America with his stolen secrets. So the setting is one of the more interesting parts of the story. Like usual, it's a steampunk world with anachronistic technology, late 1800s, airships, uh, ubiquitous steam engines, and clockwork devices. Besides that, the British Empire is considerably more powerful than it actually was in real life. There are outrageous conspiracies within the royal family where they're plotting to bump each other off and seize power <laughs> of the empire. Queen Victoria is not the matronly figurehead that we know and love. No, she's a hands-on tyrant who is greatly Feared, even in her 70s, she is a badass queen. Now, I love this setting, and I love the way that Chatsworth 
kind of switches up some of the steampunk tropes. As you'd expect, these two characters, both young and single, they appear to have some romantic prospects. Even though Constance cannot even think about marrying a commoner and a foreigner to boot, as is very common in romantic plots, the pair start out hating each other, whereas the man is usually the arrogant and abrasive one. In this case, it's Constance. Truesdale's a gentleman, and he feels duty-bound to help a damsel in distress, to a point, and although Constance is going to drive him nuts if she doesn't get him killed first. Though neither, of course, are what they appear to be. Uh, Truesdale's a spy, <laughs> and he's got some shameful secrets. And Constance, beneath her prickly exterior, she actually has a heart of gold, which Truesdale is slowly discovering. Chatsworth also switches it up by setting it in Sheffield rather than London and having Truesdale be from Kansas rather than from Texas, as you might expect for a cowboy character. But the best part is the humor. As much as I enjoy a good funny book, I rarely laugh out loud. Even while reading Chris Elliott's very silly steampunk satire, Shroud of the Thwacker, I only laughed out loud a couple times, maybe five tops. In this case, I lost count. Besides the crazy mishaps that happen in the action scenes, you know, with uh, poor Truesdale getting his nose broken and so on, there is the acrimonious interaction between him and Constance, with lots of quips, put-downs, and double entendres. I also love how the chapter titles are all horrible puns, such as blood, sweat, and gears. Now, as grown-worthy as they are, I love a good pun if it's not, you know, done to excess. Constance's flamboyant male cousin is another favorite character. He steals the show whenever he's on scene. And there's some loony situations, including the game of Prussian polo, in which there are four teams, it's kind of a melee, and they play on mechanical beasts such as griffins, unicorns, and giraffes. <laughs> and uh, the game is so dangerous that they have special rules for substitution when a player dies on the field. Now, Constance plays this game, of course. <laughs> and I also love Chatworth's body humor. For a female writer, that's pretty cool. My personal favorite is how a male character, not Tuesdale, of course, because he's a gentleman, this male character refers to Constance's breasts as Cupid's kettle drums. Question is, will Tuesdale keep his sanity and his life in dealing with the reckless Constance? Will Constance learn from her mistakes and become a truly independent woman? Will the two of them get past their mutual attraction to something more? You gotta read the book to find out and have a hilarious time on the way. I highly recommend this book. By the way, guys, I checked out Chatworth's author bio photo and she is not a redhead, sorry. Now looking at her other works, I see only two though I may have missed some. One is a steampunk short story called 10 Minutes Past Tea Time, and I love that title, but I haven't read it yet. But I'm also very happy to say that The Brass Queen has a sequel called Grand Tour, which came out very recently, the 23rd of April this year. I can guarantee you I'll be reading it. So, this has been my review of Elizabeth Chatworth's Brass Queen, published in 2021 which has a sequel that came out this year. Please comment below. Please like and subscribe. That helps us out. Please check out my works on Amazon. List is in the description. And for now, this is Steampunk Desperado saying adios amigos, the Steampunk Desperado channel, where the past meets the future and the present is extraordinary.